wonder. I am in Hong Kong with you guys. Wow. Uh, I just want to start off by uh, thanking uh, Gemma, Song, and HBR. Let's give them a hand for a wonderful job. <laughs> and also, I want you to give a hand for yourself for being here. So my name is Dana Trust. I was born and raised in Rwanda, it's a small country in Africa. And what I'm going to do today, I am going to share a very personal story with you. I will share with you how I survived the 1994 Rwandan genocide, eventually uh, immigrated to uh, the US uh, in a state called Connecticut as a refugee in 2005 and eventually uh, made my way to Hong Kong to give a keynote speech at uh, HPAIR. So, to begin, I want to teach you how to say something in Kinyarwanda, because this is an international conference, and we all speak so many languages. Raise your hand up high if you want to learn how to say something in Kinyarwanda, which is my language in Rwanda. Raise your hand up high, I want to see you. Perfect. Okay, so most of you. And uh, so I want to teach you how to say, how are you? And then you will say, I am fine. So to say, how are you in Kinyarwanda, which is the official language of Rwanda, you say, I'm a cool. I'm a cool. I'm a cool. And then to say I am fine, you say Nimeza. Nimeza. You guys are great. <laughs> so I am going to say I'm a cool, and then you're going to say Nimeza, okay? You're going to say it now, okay? I'm a cool. Nimeza. Perfect. That's, that was great. Um, that was great. So, um, I've come a long way uh, to being here tonight, and uh, I, uh, I have a PowerPoint to share with you. Uh, for some of you who are familiar with what happened in 1994, uh, I'm, not, I'm really not gonna go into the politics of what happened, but I'm gonna, of what happened to the whole country. I'm gonna also share about my family. Uh, that's my mom and myself, and I was a little baby. I was born in 1989. Uh, I'm 27, so I'm not much older than most of you guys. And uh, when I was five years old, I remember my dad and mom called everyone in the living room and we said, we need to pray, we need to pray because something terrible is about to happen to us. Uh, we came in the living room and we prayed for protection because at the time, on the radio, if you turn on the radio or TV, uh, there were hit being preached. Uh, my mom was Tutsi, one of the uh, ethnic against in Rwanda, and my dad was Hutu. And because my mom was a, a Tutsi, it meant that we, all the kids needed to, to die. Um, so after we prayed, my mom and two sisters, we went to Highlander Church where we watched it that. Uh, uh, on Saturdays, my family were seven day Adventists. And one day, a group of people with machetes came outside. These people had knives, they had guns, they had every violent equipment you could think of. They took everyone outside, they made, they made a huge circle, and they started killing all the two teeth, my mom's tribe. I remember at five years old, witnessing so many people being killed, so many blood, and uh, it was horrifying, it was horrifying. That moment of my mom being killed right there is the last time I remember of her. And my dad, who has stayed home, trying to uh, close the gate and secure uh, our house, was caught, he was also killed. And after he was killed, the killers went into our uh, house. They stole our belongings, or our TVs, everything that we own or value. They stole, and after they did that, to punish us even more, they put our house on fire. So just imagine uh, the home where you grew up, with whichever country you're from, how you lose your, both your mom and dad, uh, you witness your mom get killed, and then your house that you love very much, that you grew up in, the only house you have is burned and taken away from you. That was me and many uh, hundreds, uh, thousands of uh, Rwandans that experienced this experience. Uh, by the grace of God, um, I survived by the grace of the high power. I survived. There are many, uh, are not all Hutus were doing the killings. I actually survived because a um, Hutu hit me. He took me to his house. He hit me. 
and uh, eventually I fled to a nearby country called the Congo now as a refugee. And uh, I lived in the Congo for some time until I came back to Rwanda in 1995. And that's me. Uh, this photo here is me at uh, around five years old after the genocide when I came back. And uh, uh, I was very traumatized I, uh, from everything that I had witnessed. And the life got uh, worse. I uh, was constantly beaten uh, for uh, doing anything. I was washing dishes and I said two plus two equals uh, three. So I get one for it. I was, uh, 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 I just got whooped for everything. And uh, I was not allowed to have friends. I was constantly scared. And uh, at some point I started questioning God why he didn't have me killed as well uh, and why I was going through so much. And, uh, but through it all, through it all, I always had hope. I always had hope that things would get better for me one day. And I think one of the things I want you to take away from this presentation today is that no matter what you go through in life, there is hope. You gotta have hope, you gotta have faith, because it gets better, it gets better. No matter what you may be going through right now, it's gonna get better, because it got better for me. When I was uh, uh, 11 years old, uh, an angel came, took me from Rwanda, and then I went to a nearby country called uh, uh, Zambia. I lived in Zambia for four years, uh, where I learned how to speak English. And uh, I, I struggled in uh, Zambia as well, uh, for many reasons. I didn't have family in Zambia, it's a different country. And I lived with four different families, a family from Nigeria, a family from the Congo, a family from Zambia, you name it. But again, I never lost hope. I knew that one day I would go to the United States and reunite with my sisters, because uh, before my parents passed, they afforded for one of my sisters to go to the States. So anyway, uh, these are my two sisters that I was hiding with in the church. Uh, my parents had eight children. I was the last one. Uh, Mutesi, uh, on, uh, this is my uh, uh, right, right? Yeah, this is my right. Mutesi wearing the blue dress is my seventh child of our family. And uh, I remember her very well. And this is Madhuguri, one of my, they both were caught in the church and they were killed in the genocide. And uh, this is me, uh, sometime around 10 years old, when I was going through so much and I had a dream of going somewhere where I would be allowed to go to school and I can have a family who can teach me how to do math and they wouldn't make fun of me because I played with girls and uh, I just wanted to go somewhere better. Um, and uh, this, uh, the guy wearing yellow is my brother, Ebony. He passed away sometime in 1993, uh, before the genocide. Uh, after the Rwanda genocide, I lived with Marcel and his wife. Uh, Marcel died two years ago. Um, he had a heart attack. And those are four, three of his boys. Uh, they're still in Rwanda. My family has had a lot of uh, tragedy, uh, uh, tra tragedies, like a lot of death and so forth, a lot of pain and so forth. And, uh, uh, but uh, I never let that pain, uh, uh, it, it, all that struggle stop me. Uh, I keep on pushing, I keep on chasing my dreams, I keep on believing that it's gonna get better, it's gonna be okay. Every time I fall down, I always uh, get up. And that's what you have to do in life because life is very complicated, but you just gotta keep on moving. Um, this is my brother, Nelson, my only surviving brother. Uh, he came to the United States uh, earlier this year, actually. Uh, he came because uh, my uh, nephew, Francis, uh, who was 18, uh, passed away earlier uh, this uh, March. He had cancer. Um, and uh, Francis was a huge supporter of uh, mine. I, uh, um, I almost committed suicide. I attempted to commit suicide a couple of times in my life because of everything that I've been through. And when I first uh, um, I came out as gay in uh, uh, when I was in college. Francis was very supportive for me, and uh, as you can see, he's wearing one of my T-shirts that said uh, and, uh, that says I stand with Daniel uh, Trust to stop homophobia. Because at some point I thought I was going to be a fashion designer or something. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, and these are my two sisters, Evelyn and Evani, who lives uh, in uh, uh, Evani or lives in. Uh, uh, California and everyone wearing the green uh, scarf lives in Bridgeport, America. She's the woman I lived with when I first came to um, to the States. And uh, this is me at graduation. Uh, in, I, gradu I graduated college. I graduated college. <laughs> um, 
I graduated college. I majored in business management at the State University in Connecticut. Uh, and uh, uh, going to college was hard. Uh, you know, I went to the States as a refugee. I was 15 years old. I could barely speak English. And uh, but I worked really hard. I learned how to speak English, and then eventually, you know, graduated high school with high honors. And I was involved. I finally made friends, and no one was begging me for getting a math uh, uh, problem currently. And uh, so this picture here. Um, uh, means a lot to me, and uh, uh, this is three years ago, uh, and, uh, and you know, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the adults, the many wonderful people who I've met along the way. So even though my parents were taken away from a very long time, I've been able to meet people who have come in my life and they've made a difference. Kathy Silver, uh, the, the woman I'm having was my photography teacher, and she made a huge difference in my life. Uh, she would. Uh, take many students, the city where I'm from is a low income uh, city in, in the States, and many of the states, kids don't have resources. And Kathy would take us to New York to go to museums, she would take us horse riding, she gave us experiences that many, many of us never had. So this was uh, my uh, the graduation party that I had, and this uh, uh, Visha, at the bottom picture, Visha and her daughter. When I first, I got my first car when I was uh, uh, 19, I worked part time at Go Navy, a company called No Navy, is owned by Gap, and I bought my first car for $900, because I had saved up, and to register a car for insurance in the United States is very expensive, you pay like $500 if you're 19, I didn't have anyone to, to register the car for me, so I had met uh, Fisher where I worked bagging newspapers, like, uh, so we could send them, and so somehow became friends with her, and when I bought my car, Visha agreed to register someone my car on my behalf, so I could pay uh, a hip of nothing for two years. So that was very helpful. And then Marge at the top and Elaine uh, ran, a, ran a program when I was in high school, and uh, they uh, 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 helped me get a scholarship, a few scholarships actually. So that was very helpful to me uh, as well. And um, uh, let me just, how much time do I have? Eight minutes? How much? Okay, um, and uh, sorry. So I, I am um, very honored that I get the opportunity to travel around the country, specifically in the United States. Well, I'm not an international speaker because I'm here in Hong Kong. I get to sit on panels with uh, professors uh, who have PhDs. It's such an honor. Uh, and uh, this was at William Patterson University in New Jersey, where I gave a keynote uh, and also sat on a panel. It was very wonderful. And I've since. Um, uh, started uh, since I've become somewhat successful. Uh, I, uh, I started an organization called the Daniel Trust Foundation, where I give back to students like myself who come from low-income communities and make a difference in their life. And this is a picture we took at the June event we had, a big gala we had in June, and it was wonderful. These are wonderful people that I've met in the states. I can't believe I've met these people like 11 years ago and become like family. And uh, these are students that we we recognize this year. Uh, we had 15 students uh, this year in our program, and uh, we had uh, uh, 14 teachers whom we recognize. One of the special things about our program is that when students apply for a scholarship, we ask them to not make a teacher who has made a difference in their lives, just like Kathy Silver made a difference in my life. And uh, uh, we've made a huge impact in, in young people's lives in a short amount of time. I'm not going to go into these numbers, but uh, uh, we have an information online uh, we could go to our, our website, Grand Mall, and uh, we have Daniel Trust Magazine. I have a few copies. I have six copies. So the first people to see me after the presentation oh, at the God. end will get those six copies for you. <laughs> but the magazine is also available online. And uh, I have a show, a YouTube show. If you haven't checked it out yet, you have to check it out. It's called the Daniel Trust Show. And uh, uh, I've been privileged to appear in many publications uh, in the states and. Uh, when I was a sophomore, my uh, alma mater gave me the opportunity to appear on the cover of the Southern Connecticut Alumni Magazine before I graduated for everything that I had started. So that was very cool. Um, and uh, I have a video. I have a six uh, minute video that I want to play for you uh, quickly. Uh, and I think some, somebody's gonna help us play it. I just wanna demonstrate uh, the impact of, of my work. And uh, at the end, maybe I'll, if we have time, maybe I'll take one question. And then I know there will be another keynote towards the end uh, after me. And maybe at the end, if you have a go outside, we can get hug, we can take selfies, we can do uh, everything we have to do uh, to connect. Yeah, so the video. <laughs>